Hi everyone. So today we're going to be talking about Belyath. So Belyath is a legendary support unit whose job is essentially to protect your units by stalling the game as well as eliminating high priority units from your enemy such as Angelica, Nartas, and Dalby. She does this by resurrecting the allies into skeletons which reflect a percent of the enemy's attack as fixed damage. Now, if you're going for plus 3, that's 150% fixed damage. Um, this is also why she thrives against units with high base attack. Because, again, she does reflect the um, enemy's attack damage and not, the, um, the, not your unit's attack damage. So, units such as Alec or Davi will 100% die. So, Belgias was already decent prior to the devil update but the problem was she couldn't pierce um, certain high pick rate units such as Livia or health Velfrin. Um this is still true now but the thing is with the introduction of the six devils into the meta again Belyat is seeing more usage because she counters three very strong meta units so she counters Nartas she counters Angelica and she counters Dalby. She will also pierce most DPS like Alec, Taylor, um, some DPS like Kyria. It will depend on the attack buffs. Um, but unfortunately for units that have low base attacks such as Barbara or Lyudmila, there's almost no way for a single skeleton for Barbara to kill. Now, um, how about defenders? Barbara will not be able to kill any def I I'm sorry, Beliath will not be able to kill any defenders. Um, she also will struggle with Catherine and Livia, so she won't be able to kill those two units by herself. She's gonna need some help. Um, so there's a lot of units that actually survive Beliath. She can only consistently kill Dalvi and Nartas, even Angelica. Um, is very conditional when it comes to Belyath. So why use Belyath? So Belyath actually has the highest win rate for any mercenary in all these servers except the global server. I don't really check the EU but um, for this video just forget that the Europe server exists because I don't like checking the data for the Europe server. There's not enough players to justify a percentage. So yeah, Belyath has the highest win rate so in for example in korea server her win rate goes over any other unit that's used over um 20 percent i didn't check all the units that's why i said over 20 percent but um yeah she she beats the win rate for nartas livia granhilder dalvi lucius um anything you can name even angelica um Rafithia. so she does beat this win rate so what does this mean? Does this mean she's better than those aforementioned units? No, it does not. Definitely not. It just means that she does have a place in the meta. She's very usable. And the reason why the win rate, for example, of Nartas is a bit lower um, is because there are a lot of people that try to counter Nartas. For example, a lot of people got Grand Hilder just for Nartas. Um, a lot of people got Belyath just for, Nart um, just for Nartas. And also the high pick rate for Nartas. So for most most servers, it at least 70%. The high pick rate for Nartas also makes um, him to, susceptible to bad teams. While for Belyath, most of the people who do get Belyath already do have an established team. You can't say you can't say the same for someone who gets Nartas. Um, this is why the win rate for Nartas is slightly lower. How about in global? Why is the win rate for Nartas higher in global? Um, I believe it has something to do with the low use rate for um, Belyath. So if you guys don't know Belyath, um, global and the Europe server are relatively new servers compared to all the other servers. So um, Korea servers, the oldest, and Japan, Taiwan, and Asia are the same age. So um, not a lot of people started with Belyath, and more importantly, when the Devils hit, a lot of people got Angelica. 
you have to remember before not everyone had debuff immunity not everyone had a lot of damage reduction not everyone had percent health damage angelica was a very broken unit before that's why a lot of people got her now with the coming of the devil update again a lot of people who previously had angelica were still using her why is this relevant it's because Beliath is good not against just Nartas, but also against Angelica. So the win rate, I forgot the exact win rate. I, I mean, sorry, the exact use rate for Angelica. But it's around like 15% for global. Um, for Asia, it's like 35, I think, 35%. And then for Korea, it's around 60%. So you can see in global... It's not even, uh, it's around one fourth of the use rate in Korea. This means that um, in global, essentially, if you get Beliath, she can only counter Nartas or Dalvi consistently because these are two units which are consistently used in the meta, um, at least except for the Korea server, which has more units. So. Nartas and Dalvi are the two units which you can consistently counter with Belia. Now, if you want to counter Dalvi, you'll have to put a unit at the front. If you want to counter Nartas, you will have to put a unit at skip to become a skeleton. So, it's a different tile, so it's somewhat inefficient, if that makes sense. So, for example, in my formation, I only aim to counter Nartas, but since there are 30%, at least 30% of the players in high tier do have Angelica, I can do this easily by taunting up a Grand Hilder. Now, Angelica is one of the few units that can consistently kill Grand Hilder. Um, so, when Angelica kills my Grand Hilder, the Nartas will be killed by the skeleton the next turn. But if it's, for example, just a random scenario, a Barbara kills my Grand Hilder instead, it's still a skip tile, so something like a Kaoli, Lucius, or Grand Hilder won't be able to hit it, but a Nartas or a Angelica will still hit it. So, um, you don't really need a lot of skeletons with Belia. You just need one or two core skeletons, core units which you want to be skeletons. So, do I recommend Belia? to all the players, all the new players. Um, no. Beliath is a great unit, but she isn't a backbone um, to the extent that Rafithia or Nartas is. The reason why um, Rafithia or Nartas would have a lower win rate is because essentially almost everyone has them. So you're going to see um, a diverse pool of people and if two Nartas fight each other, essentially the win rate is 50-50, right? That's why um, the win rate for Nartas is also a bit lower. Um, coupled by the fact that a lot of people are trying to counter these units in specific. But for Beliath, we don't get that. She's already a counter unit. No one is um, actively trying to counter Beliath. So, now that we understand Beliath a bit, should, he, should you get Beliath? Um... Like I said before, it depends. So, for example, if you do uh, have a Rafithia, Beliath is a good pair for Rafithia. If you run a uh, Mage Heavy Composition, Beliath is also great because she does specialize in stalling the game, which means that your Mages will most likely be alive by round 2. Um, what else? She pairs well with Grand Hilder as well. Um, some units she does not pair with include... Kuwik, um, Zakan, any unit that doesn't receive the resurrection skill type. So you have to read those in their skills. Mamunir as well because um, essentially only Barbara can one-shot Mamunir. It's very hard for warriors to one-shot Mamunir. So she has a very bad pairing with Beliath. But if you can notice my formation, I only really want Grand Hilder to be the skeleton. And uh, not, not much much. Not not much more than that. I just really need Grand Hilder. So, um, yeah. You have to consider the units you have. Another consideration if you should get Beliath is ask yourself, is your team already established? Do you already have 
a main supporter because you cannot use Belliat as a main supporter unless you bring her to plus 10 which is um, something I don't recommend it would be better to um, use Rafithia plus 12 so if you don't have a main supporter consider getting a Michaela or a um, Rafithia first because Belliath will struggle in being your main supporter so I think I covered almost everything um, let me just explain why she will not kill units such as Catherine by herself um, she will not kill something like Catherine because Catherine has like 90 base attack and remember um, Beliath will reflect base attack meaning that if you have 90% base attack and Beliath plus 3 hits you I, I mean you hit a plus 3 Beliath that Beliath will reflect 150% of the 90, 90 which is 135 135 damage is not enough to kill Catherine whose health is around 11,000 12,000 so um, I hope you kind of understand the reason why she will kill Dalvi is because Dalvi has like 4,000 damage and her health is around 4,000 as well without buffs so you reflect 150% of 4,000 that's 6,000 damage that's a sure kill on Dalvi so just so you guys understand it now in my formation if Catherine does hit Granhilder she will die but it's not because of Belias alone you can see that if Catherine hits Granhilder she will also hit Rafithia, Dalvi and Nartas three of these are damage uh, debuff immune meaning that they won't take um, any effect from the um, damage over time of Catherine hence they will survive also this means that we do have three units reflecting Rafithia's reflect so coupled with the skeleton that's four units ref um, reflecting damage back into Catherine so that's why Catherine will die with this formation but these skeletons alone are not enough so um, I'm not sure if I'm missing anything else but if I do uh, miss something I might just type it in text in the appropriate areas but I feel like I've covered everything so yeah that's about it guys so I'm just gonna leave the rest of this with music and once again thanks for watching um, in the morning, I realized that I didn't actually do any explanations for the formations um, for Belia. So we're going to do that now. We're just going to... I just want to show everyone first the um, Cecilia skin because the voice animation is actually really nice. If you can hear it. It's really nice. So I'm just going to change that because uh, I change these skins every day there. Um, yeah, let's go over the formations very quickly. Um, how should we do this? So the thing about Beliath is you need a lot of planning. Uh, um, for example, you see this formation for Bulbasaur. You can't just plug in Beliath like you can plug in a Rafithia or a Michaela. In order to maximize Beliath, uh, this formation you can't use her either. In order to maximize Beliath, you need to plan your formations around her. Um, this does not mean that the formation has to be centered around her. It just means that um, you have to know what you want her for. Um, I already explained before that the main skeleton I want is Grand Hilder. This is because, for example, um, just an example, I go against something like this, um, just, um, Something like this and then pretend like there's more stuff here. Yeah, there's more stuff here. 
let's say this is a Barbara, let's say this is an Angelica. Um, if I have Grand Hilder at the top, and then um, if I have Grand Hilder here, Lucius here, and they receive the buff of Beliath, essentially I have a skip skeleton if Grand Hilder dies. What this means is that Nart, um, when Angelica kills my Grand Hilder, Nartas. Nartas will essentially die the next turn. The this won't always work. So for example, like if it's a Barbara Vase, if it's a Barbara Angelica, um, if it's a Foxy Angelica. So sometimes you'll see formations like this, but not very often. Um, so yeah, you have to play. You don't need everyone that Beliath buffs it to become a skeleton and for example if you do have something that would appreciate the extra buffs so the 30% and the 25% crit damage that's a negligible buff but for example with the additional 5% crit rate my Mamunir can hit 100% crit rate so that's an example of someone who will benefit greatly from the offensive buffs so this formation could work with Belia um, yeah she's not like Rafithia um, you can because for example Rafithia um, she's more easy to stick into any formation let's see if I have an old formation uh, this is a Belia formation but for example here we just don't, we just want, we just got a Rafitia, for example. You just stick her in, give her the appropriate attack range, and she's good to go. She's part of the formation. You can't just do that with Beliath. Beliath requires a lot, requires a lot of planning. So, um, yeah, I think I already put the chart earlier for the units that Belias cannot um, give skeletons to, but let me explain first why. Um, it's very simple actually. We'll just go over three units, uh, maybe four units. Um, maybe, yeah. So, where's Arikan? Arikan. Ymir, then Arissa, and Lillian. Hold on, sorry guys. Lillian, I have her plus 10, where is she? There. Okay, so you see the first batch at the front? Arkan and Ymir cannot receive the skeleton skill type because they cannot receive any buffs. Remember, Something is either a buff or a debuff. You see that it has an arrow up. That's a buff. That's a buff. So they cannot receive buffs because of this skill type. Um, for Lillian, she has an exception somewhere. Um, here, can't receive stats boost skill type. So usually it will say stats enhancement skill type. Now, they didn't want Lillian to get any type of stats boost, um, so that's pretty much everything. Um, this is a stats boost, so yeah, Lillian won't be able to get the resurrection skill type. Same for these two, same as Arkan, they cannot receive the um, buff skill type. You can read, can't receive buff skill type except immunity. Same here. So, I was actually using Kuwik with Beliath before because I didn't read that, and then I'm like, why don't I? Why am I not getting skeletons? So I read it, and then I had to switch it up for Chocolate. So I think that was Formation Two. No, Formation Three. Yeah, Formation Three. So yeah, because Kuwik is more useful if you're not using with Beliath. 
he doesn't take up a turn even in round two. That's why I like him. Um, another thing that I failed to explain is that skeletons will not change the nature of your character. So let's just give a few examples here. Um, yeah, that's everything. So if Rafithia becomes a skeleton, Rafithia will not take up a turn on the first and second rounds because she's a supporter. So Belia will not change the nature of your um, characters. If they are a warrior, they will still take up a turn every turn. Same for defenders, while for mages, they will only take up a turn every other turn. Even Nartas with the magic cast, this one, will only take up a turn every other turn. So, um, yeah, I think that was uh, need needed an explanation. And because they don't uh, take up a turn, for example, you only have two units left. Pretend these are skeletons. If someone kills your Mammonier, the game will end with you losing. If someone kills your Rafithia, you have not lost yet because they only killed a support. But if they kill the last offensive unit, you lose, even if both of them are technically skeletons because of Belia. So that's kind of how it works. Now for the formation building, some things to note is... Um, Veliath's va value is in round 1, so what this means is that you want her in a spot where she'd, she'll die. You want her to become a skeleton because you don't really need um, her in round 2. Rafithia? Rafithia has value throughout the game, but she's also very dispensable because of her buffs lasting for a very long amount of time you can see at the right now mine is maxed we have 24 turns of buffs so bell i'm sorry uh, um Rafithia and belia they're good candidates for potential skeletons take note that you have to give You have to give Rafithia weaker runes than this one because with these runes, you can see her Agi is 80%. If you want her to be a skeleton, you have to give her weaker runes because mine will often survive Angelicas. Uh, very often, we will survive Angelicas. So um, just keep that in mind. This is also why I opted to give. Belia slightly weaker runes. I do have more 29% runes because um, I want her to die from Kaolis. There are situations where she dies from Kaoli and something like a Dalvi or an Angelica would be in the tanking lane. So that that's why I weakened her runes. Um, if she grazes, she'll survive from Kaoli though. Um, the reason why I can't lower it any lower than that is because I also want to survive as mode. So yeah. Um, if you want to make a formation around Belia, you have to um, have one or two key targets for your skeleton. So something like even something like this will work. Or um, you can do something like this as well. So keep in mind the high, um, high pre the most used mercenaries. So you can look at the rankings. The I'm sorry, the hot marks, and depending on your rank, you can just check your defense. Oh, it reset. Um, you can just check your defense. You can see everyone has Dalvi and a lot of people have As mode, a lot of people have Angelica. So um, let's pretend that we're going against Dalvi and As mode. I know that As mode isn't seen a lot, maybe in global, but in Asia you'll see him quite a lot. So yeah, another As mode. Um, 
So example, I am struggling with Asmo Dalvi users. Let's uh, not lots of people have Mamun here because not everyone has good taste. So for example, we can do something like this. Pretend that my Velfern has health runes. Now, no matter what the lane, someone with Dalvi Asmo will kill their Asmo with this one because. With sufficient defense ruins, remember that Belyath is debuff immune. With sufficient defense ruins, Asmode won't be able to penetrate the defense of um, Belyath. Maybe I'll attach a few clips of that at the left side. So keep in mind my I do have even better runes. I'm just not equipping it on Belyath. I, I have a lot of better runes. Not a lot, like... I have one more better room. <laughs> so yeah, pretend this is health Velfern, um, Lucius, even if it was assault Velfern. The point is, Asmo will not kill it. So I don't have Asmo. Asmo will not kill it. And then Asmo will turn Beliath into a skeleton. This will be enough to kill Davi. Now let's pretend there's no Asmo. There's no Asmo and um, your Dalvi gets blocked by Velfern or a Mamunir or a Grand Hilder gets blocked by that. Um, this becomes a skeleton and it will kill Dalvi in round 2. So, um, how about a while ago I did say that Asmode would turn Beliath into a skeleton. You might think that that isn't the case because uh, the... Asmo pillages buffs, but the thing is you have to read the exception tab. So this skill is actually not pillageable. You can see at the fourth, not affected by pillage and copying. So you have to read all of that. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I don't think I explained why Lucius a while ago um, could not receive Belliat's buff. It's because of this skill. So you can see. It prohibits the mercenary from receiving resurrection skill type. And this skill is a resurrection skill type. So I'm sorry um, that I didn't mention that a while ago. So what else? So that's a good way to go against the um, Asmo. No matter what lane he starts, he's gonna he's gonna essentially cock his Davi. Um Even if it was something like, let's just assume we do something like this. Even if Foxy dies, um, Foxy still becomes a skeleton. Foxy still becomes a skeleton. Now what if it was something like this? And no one will die. With something like this, um, you don't really need Belliath. And remember... Beliath has very bad synergy with Mamonir and Velfern. He has very bad synergy with his two units. Um, they're also th those two units are also um, pretty decent against Beliath. Um, so this is actually what I do. Mamonir beside Beliath. Um, if I was trying to counter Dalvi, this would be more efficient. But the thing is, the reason why I do it like this is if I go against a bottom lane, something, just a lot of units at the bottom, I want them to clear Beliath right away so they can kill Grand Hilder at the top. What does this mean? Now, on offense, there are three lanes. Lucius, Mamuni, and Grand Hilder. Just pretend these are the three lanes. Now... The Mamunir lane is in front of the enemy Mamunir lane. The Grand Hilder lane is in front of the enemy Grand Hilder lane. Same with Lucius. So, in the Grand Hilder lane, since there's only one unit, if they clear that lane, they have to go at the top. Now, since they are attacking the top, and I have a skeleton at skip. Why do I have a skeleton at skip? Because Grand Hilder is a taunter, so... Minus plus one, 
um, she's a taunter, she often gets turned into skeletons. I already played a lot of the clips of mine, so you probably noticed already how she works. She turns into skeleton and then cocks the enemies, Nartas or Catherine, something like that. So, um, yeah, um, essentially with this formation, because my DPS is my DPS row is in the middle. Essentially, what happens is. I only have to worry about the Mamunir lane. The Grand the Grand Hilder lane and the Lucius lane will take care of themselves because of Beliath. Because of Beliath. So because of this, um, essentially I just have to hit the enemy lane before their Nartas do. And I do have Dalvi to clear Cecilia and uh, Barbara as a precaution. Um, so if it's against an enemy DPS lane in the middle, I automatically win. If it's against a bottom or a top lane, it will depend, but Beliath does increase my win rate for that. Um.